Hello random viewers and welcome to the second episode of Building an Aircraft. Next to me is a stack of approximately 100 pieces of individual foam to a height of over about 50 inches. So this is the outer one third of the right wing of the aircraft. Now this is just a test piece, I obviously can't use this kind of foam. It's not the correct strength or ratio of density. However, it is a great test of the cutting templates and hot wire cutter. With the hot wire cutter completed, the next step was to create the cutting templates. These start out as drawings that were included with the aircraft plans that I purchased from Cheryl Dickey, and these have to be individually cut out. There are many included on a very large sheet of paper, and it's just a process of meticulously going along the lines and cutting them out. Here's a sped up version because cutting with scissors does take a while, and the level of precision that's necessary, yeah, it adds even more time. This one sheet of paper has almost every cutting template for both the wings and the canards, as well as the vertical stabilizers. Once they're cut out, they have to be bonded to a piece of 1 16th inch plywood. I think I used 1 8th inch instead, just because the 1 16th inch was so flimsy. It worked fine. So we have some spray adhesive, which very strongly attaches the paper to the wood. From there, I used the spray can as a roller and pressed down the paper pieces even more to create an even stronger bond. Once those are done, it was necessary to cut them out with a band saw. I attempted to use a hand saw, and that took a very long time to get even a single template. So I switched over to the electronic band saw that my friend Dan Polstra very kindly allowed me to use. A band saw is helpful because it allows for these intricate cuts that are necessary to get the complex shapes of these airfoils and other templates. As accurate and helpful as the band saw is, it, this is still 1 8 inch plywood. Very, very thin, very flimsy and the blade on the bandsaw it still destroys the wood to some extent. So I had to leave a gap between where the t cutting template is supposed to be and where the wood is supposed to be. This is actually called for in the plans as well. I don't think there's a single bandsaw blade that exists that is precise enough. So we cut just close to where it's supposed to be, but leave a good fraction of an inch or so. And then this leads on to the next step, which is the filing. Filing was probably the longest part of this process, but it just involves taking a metal file and shaving off that little bit of wood that was left by the bandsaw until the shape perfectly matches the drawing. Speeding it up, it still takes a while, but in the time lapse you can see that very slowly material is removed. As tedious as the filing is, it is critical that these templates are extremely smooth because they are going to be guiding the hot wire cutter and very much determining the shape of the wing. So any imperfections here will reflect directly onto the airfoil shape and the aerodynamics of the aircraft. Okay, with the addition of a fan blowing air onto this heat sink, it doesn't get quite as hot. It also keeps the transformer from getting too hot. The thing we finally did was uh, replace the width of this wire. It is now much thinner, which allows it to get significantly hotter. And I don't quite need full power to get to proper cutting heat anymore. With those improvements made to the hot wire cutter, I was able to stack up a large number of individual foam pieces that I had left over from another project. Of course, they're not perfect, but they are useful for testing the cutter and the templates. So we get the wire, one person on each side, one template on each side. Each template has numbers along the top and the bottom edge. The basic technique is that these are called talking numbers. The two people on each side communicate so that ideally the hot wire cutter hits the same numbers at the same time. So you can hear that as my grandfather and I work to try to coordinate to make sure we're hitting the same numbers at the same time. Two. Two. Okay, and we just keep doing this over to the three. Over to the three. And push it up against that thing so it can't move. There you go. Right, I'm at eight. You're at eight? I'm at eight and a half now. Right. I'm going to pause for a second to let you catch up. Nine. Oh, okay. I'm going back up to nine. Just hit nine. Seven. Twenty-four and a half, yep. Coming up on 25, slow. Not quite there yet. There's 25. All right, now we can work our way up towards 26. Right. It's not coming? Oh, there Did it get caught? And once we make it to the end, we just go straight out and we can take a break. You are right? Okay, now coming straight across from 26, all the way over to the edge. There you go. 
and with that we have a test piece of the wing done. As you can see it was a huge ordeal to make this section of wing. It involved using these templates and cutting out to that contour, but as you can see it made a pretty good shape. We definitely have a swept wing. It's not perfect. There are definitely some imperfections uh, where the cutter was bounced slightly, but the obvious shape is there. There's the spar trough where the central wing structure will go, as well as on the underside there. It left the little hairs that it's supposed to, but we have a bit too much heat here. So increasing the tension on the wire and decreasing the heat should allow for a slightly more accurate cut when we get to the proper aviation grade foam. But as a test, this certainly is a good proof of concept, and it shows that this method will be effective and that cutter will be sufficient to cut the shape of the aircraft. I'd like to again thank Dan Polster for allowing me to use his bandsaw as well as his facility for that, as well as my grandparents for letting me use their garage and displace their vehicles in an attempt to build this aircraft. I will probably continue to inconvenience these people, but it is very much appreciated. Hopefully I'll be able to repay these people as well as many of the others that will probably end up helping me in the future uh, with a ride in the plane. Or That about wraps it up, so thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a very nice day.